In honor of Valentine's Day, we are bringing back a class from last year by Kristen Hudson, who is a registered sex therapist called Everyday Ways to Spice Up Your Sex Life. She gave a great class last year that you guys loved and you love that we were addressing this topic. So we're bringing it back for you this year. We hope you guys will enjoy this class. Hi everyone. I am so glad to be here for today's eight minute class talking to you about everyday ways you can spice up your sex life. My name is Kristen Hodson and I'm a certified sex therapist and licensed clinical social worker. I also teach up at the University of Utah teaching sexual health to master's level students um, and I'm founder and executive director of The Healing Group. One of the things I wanted to start off with is demystifying this idea or breaking down this idea of spicing up our sex life because oftentimes when we think of spicing up our sex life we are thinking about lingerie and new positions and candles and novelty and while those things do spice up our sex life if we don't have some founda foundational principles in place then it really doesn't matter how many um new little toys or things we add we can still feel like we're lacking and inherently um, longing for more in our sex life. So the first thing I want to talk about is this idea of the every day. That when we're talking about investing into our sex life in everyday ways, I want you, we just got done learning from Jennifer Finlayson Fife. That's a great way to build, like it's a foundation that you can build a strong sex life on. Um, one of the first things I want you to think about is what is happening in between sexual encounters. So if you're thinking about, if you're having sex on a Saturday, um, what are you doing in between within your relationship? Or is there connection? Is there affectionate touch? Is there partnering? Is there a feeling like you are being invested in and you are investing into your partner? That is a big thing that I help couples is to think about foreplay is everything that's happening in between a sexual encounter. So that really is tip number one for everyday ways to spice up your sex life is invest in the in-between. The next thing is I want you to think about what is it that you want? When it comes to our sex life, one of the things we can do is we can get really comfortable or we can be really familiar with or feel safer in expressing all of the things we don't want with our sex life. We don't want to try this new position. We don't want to be touched like that. We don't want to have sex this time of day. We don't, we, get, we can have this whole laundry list of all the things we don't want. Um, however, it doesn't really guide our partner or really guide ourselves to embrace and own our sexuality from a place of wanting. Wanting can feel very vulnerable. When we want, we kind of put ourselves out there for our partner to see us and to know us, which can be vulnerable. But what I, my next tip would be to identify, what is it that I want from my sex life? What do I, what do I want in terms of touch? What do I want in terms of context? What do I want to feel? What do I want to experience? And how can I create what, I, what it is I'm wanting and what do I need to express from the wanting? That's one of the things that can make it so that we become defensive and or not really engaged in our own sex life is if we're just focusing on all the things we don't want and trying to not have that rather than moving closer to what we do want. Um, the next thing really is making anticipation your ally. And what I mean by this, if you think back to when you're dating and you didn't have the opportunity to see each other as often as maybe you wanted, and so you knew that there was a date or you were gonna get to see them that night or in three days, and so all day you had the opportunity to look forward to when you were gonna see them again or when you were gonna have a phone call, and you start to build up this anticipation energy that you're looking forward to something, to an experience with them. When we make anticipation our ally, what we're doing, what this really means is we start scheduling time for the intimate part of our life. If we think about parenting, oftentimes we're scheduling so many other things in our life. Our life runs because we are planned, we're organized, we're anticipating, we're preparing, we're looking at what's coming down the pipeline. What can happen within our partnerships 
is our intimate lives and our time with our spouse and when it comes to our sexual con connection it can get whatever's left over um, and I don't know about you but for me and most people that I work with rarely is there just leftover time that we're trying to figure out how we're gonna fill it so I want you to flip this idea um, and and start scheduling something it's it's intimate date nights it's not just a date night and then start anticipating this will then build on the the principle of wanting and expressing what you want and starting to think about that and then investing in the in-between which will help with the anticipation so as you are anticipating you're thinking about wanting the next strategy for everyday ways to spice up your sex life is how are you transitioning out of the many different hats and roles that you are participating in. So if you work full time, what is your ritual to transition out of coming home from your job and transitioning back in to your home? What is uh, What do you do to change out of mom mode and into lover or partner mode? What are you doing to step into that? And if you're having a hard time thinking about how you transition, um, out of this, one of the strategies I have is identifying a person that you resonate with their energy, their, like, like a Hollywood star, right? Someone that you see, um, a character in a book, someone you admire that lifts you up and inspires you. It's not the competitive or the, the person that makes you feel bad about yourself, but it's someone that you can emulate when you're transitioning into this persona that they embody the sexual energy, the sexual approach that you would like to have to help you transition out of mom mode and into lover mode. And so that's the biggest thing is as you are starting to, to move throughout your week, again, we're anticipating, we're wanting, is how do you transition out of being the mother, the domestic? Because it's really hard for ourselves to feel sexiest or, and what I mean by that is sexy within ourselves that we want to express and we want to want um, when we're still feeling like we're in the mom mode um, or we're in work mode, transitioning out into the lover mode. The other everyday way is really leveraging a day or time of the week that works in your favor. I know a lot of people will wait until Saturday night, they've done their date, it's 11.59 and they're really tired and they go to bed and then right as they're ready to fall asleep, maybe that's when an arm reaches over and a tickle begins. And that oftentimes, that can work, but that can make it so we're not leveraging the best of the day and the best of our energy. So one of the things I look at is if quality of sex is down, I look at what time of day or what's the context in which sex is happening. Um, look and see if mornings, if you're a morning person, find a morning. I have some couples that Saturday morning is their sex time that builds up the anticipation. It leverages energy. Kids are downstairs watching a show and it becomes part of their routine and their ritual. Same thing Sunday morning or afternoon, but find a time in your schedule that leverages the best in you. The time when you can transition out of these other roles, you can step into lover mode, when you can drop all the tasks that need to be done, find and leverage that to be in your favor. Okay, the last thing, the last tip I wanna give you is make a game, learning more about each other's preferences because a lot of times couples struggle with learning how to talk about sex. They make a lot of assumptions. They don't know what their partners want and sometimes they feel bad, like, oh, I don't wanna hurt their feelings. And no one wants to be rejected and no one wants to reject. However, if we come from that place of wanting and we become curious, and if you go back to what Jennifer said of showing up and, and it is vulnerable and it pressures us to have to be the best version of ourselves to step into a place to have these conversations, but to ask, and start to have a series of questions. Where is your favorite place to kiss? What is the favorite way? Like, how do you like to be touched the most by me? What is your biggest fantasy when it comes to sex? Um, that's a whole other class that we could be doing is talking about fantasy. But I wanted to give you some concrete strategies to think about how you can fold into your everyday way to strengthen your sex life. I hope you've enjoyed. Have a fantastic day.
Thank you so much for that class, Kristen. We hope you guys love the class. And as always, if you loved our speaker, make sure you go check her out. We're gonna link her, Kristen's profile in our stories today so you can go get a little more information from her. She has so many great resources on her page. And um, if you like this class or you wanna share it with someone, be sure to leave a comment or click the little arrow to share it after watching it. Thanks, guys.